Greetings. I've been shopping for stuff from China again. This time I've ordered one of these HDMI recorder boxes with HDCP decoding capability. After a few weeks, during which time I had to chase the supplier to find out where it had got to, it's arrived. And here it is. In the box we have an instruction manual, which is written in English rather than Chinglish, which is nice. We've also got one of these crappy travel adapters, which aren't compliant with the relevant British standards, not least because there are no shutters, unlike with a proper travel adapter. And that means you can't, there's nothing to stop you actually putting a plug in the wrong way. For example, giving yourself a live connection straight to the earth pin. And the earth on it thing is loose and rattly anyway. So that's no good at all. We've also got this power supply, which is rated at 5 volts, uh, 2 amps. There's no CE marking, although there are various other safety marks. Um, but I won't be using this one anyway. I'll take a look inside that later on. Uh, instead, I'll be using this Fihong, which I already had. The plug is slightly bigger, but it does fit the box. It's a short HDMI cable included. The box is designed to go in line between whatever you're recording and whatever you're watching it on. So obviously you need an extra cable. It's only a cheap HDMI cable. A cheap HDMI cable is all you're going to need. Finally we have the box itself. The box has the, it's got the matte plastic, it's um, it's like the, like the soft feel pens that you get, it's the same sort of feel, it feels almost rubbery but it's actually hard plastic. Anyway, um, all the connections are on the two sides. We have the on off button, we got the 5 volts 2 amps input. There's HDMI input, there's the USB connection for a hard drive or USB stick, and that's actually USB 2. There's a connection for an external microphone, so you can provide a commentary while you're recording. And there's a HDMI output, so you can watch whatever you're recording. On the top, it's just got a button and a two-color LED. The LED indicates what the box is doing. The button just stops and starts recording, or if you hold it down, you can switch between 1080 and 720 recording mode. Controls don't get much simpler than this. Anyway, let's go plug it in. Here it is, connected to my Xbox 360 for testing. The solid green light indicates that it's in 1080 mode. For any other recording modes, it's blue. And if there's no input, it flashes blue and green. I've got a 64 gigabyte USB stick plugged in. These can be formatted as FAT32 or NTFS, but not XFAT. If you connect an XFAT formatted drive, it'll act as though it's recording, but nothing actually gets recorded. I'm not testing the microphone socket here. I've already tested it and it works, at least as long as there's a microphone plugged in when it's switched on. But you need a stereo microphone, otherwise it only records the audio on the left channel. Now, all I have to do is press the button the light will start flashing, and that, that, that means it's recording a quick run on crash time 3, which incidentally has the most cumbersome controls I've ever seen in a game. Patrol. You're playing in the roles of Seymour Gurgen and here's the recording the box is made. Both are detectives and partners in service of the Highway Patrol. There are many missions and cases waiting for you. Duty calls. Drive to the police department first. The operations waiting for you require you to complete certain objectives. For example, 
keep a time limit, inflict as few damage on cars and property, collide with a perpetrator, make him stop or shoot his car. Drive in races, jumping over ramps, tailing suspects. Pressing the button again, stops recording. The light will flash green and blue briefly. And then that's it, it's finished recording. It's ready for a new recording, or you can just pull the stick out. Here's an example of the file structure on the disk. The timestamps revert to late 2013 and the file counter resets to zero when the box has been off for a while. But as far as I can see, it won't overwrite any files already there. It'll just take the next available number. And if the recording spills over the two gigabyte mark, the unit just starts a new file automatically with no gap or overlap between the two. They can just splice together. The files are all recorded in ABC MPEG-4 format with variable bitrate. And the average bitrate depends on the source. As you can see, a standard def PAL signal is recorded at about 4 megabits per second. A 720p signal at about 8 and a quarter, and a 1080i or 1080p signal at just over 10. The audio is always recorded in stereo. So if you've got a 5.1 uh, source, it's best to switch the output to stereo or get the, the audio recorded separately. Presumably it's because it's got the microphone input so it's got to take the HDMI input, convert it to analog, mix it with the microphone, convert it back to digital, and then record it again. It's all well and good recording gameplay though, but what about all that HDCP decoding shenanigans that the eBay ad claimed it could do? Well, I've tested it with various sources, but it would probably be irresponsible of me to tell you what it managed to record and what it couldn't, so I won't. Let's just say it managed to do everything the advert promised. Well, that's the review over. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's a very capable box for the money. Um, how good the power supply is remains to be seen. It would certainly need a decent uh, travel adapter if you're going to use the power supply it came with. Now, uh, let's, let's take a look inside. Well, on the bottom of the board, we've got a model number, which is handy, because if you put in YK918H into eBay, you find much the same unit at a lot less than I paid for it. Uh, albeit with no mention of HDCP decoding. It may be something you know, that they tend not to mention. I don't know. Uh, we've also got this IC on here, which is a Pericom 1-2 active HDMI demultiplexer. So presumably what this is doing is taking the HDMI input sending one copy straight to the output and the other copy straight to the rest of the processor. So it's literally passing everything through and just snaffling off a copy for the, uh, for the rest of the system. On the other side, we've got a chip under a heatsink, which we can't identify, another chip here, which is at the top ground off, and another one here with the top ground off, so you can't identify those either. But there are a few other chips which we can identify. Namely, this WM8960G, yep, this WM8960G, which is a stereo codec with Class D speaker driver. It's for portable audio stuff. It's for, um, that will be dealing with the microphone input. There's another Wolfson chip here, which is WM8804, which is a digital interface transceiver for SPDIF, so that's your know, digital audio stuff. And there's a few other bits and pieces which you can recognize. There's, uh, there's an E problem there, and there's a serial flash memory, the 32 meg serial flash memory there. And that's just, just about all you can recognize in here, really. Um, there's connection there marked um, U8, I think it was, whatever it was. Um, that's, I think, that's for the version of this which has got a remote control capability. So instead of getting off your ass and going push the button, you can do it from the comfort of your chair or whatever. Um, there's another connection there, which I don't know what's what's for, and there's another interesting one here, which what, what appears to be uh, a mini or micro USB header, which isn't on there. But that's going straight into this chip. Whether it actually does anything without the right firmware, I don't know. So that's what's inside the decoder. 
not very much. It looks uh, it's a bit, uh, bit manky around some of the connections there, but all in all, it looks quite uh, quite well made in my opinion. Anyway, in my definitely non-expert opinion. Now let's take a look at the power supply. Well, that took a bit of persuasion, but I've opened it. Um, power supply doesn't actually look too bad. It's got um, it's got a fuse. It's got filtering on it. It's got a proper. Um, this is an SD6834 um, switch mode power supply driver. Um, it could do with uh, some cuts in here to increase the uh, the creepage distance, but by and large, it actually looks like a normal power supply um, if it wasn't for the fact that I had to, uh, to plug it in with an adapter and I didn't already have the uh, the other adapter I could use instead I think I'd, I'd be happy I'd be happy to uh, to use this um, feel free to comment any more um, any experts in this field because I'm certainly not uh, an electronic engineer by trade so uh, feel free to comment but uh, to me, it looks uh, it looks okay. I mean, the, uh, the clearance is it's a bit tight on the uh, the, uh, the clearance between the uh, between the live and neutral over here, but uh, it's not too bad. So that's the uh, that's the power supply. Um, end of review. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like these things, take a look around on on eBay. You'll find uh, there are various um, there are various models of these on eBay. There are some other ones as well which haven't got the microphone input, but they do have a whole set of AV inputs. They'll record um, composite video. They'll do um, component video as well, and they'll do HDMI. So uh, so there are various ones depending on what suits your needs. How well they'll record other sources, I don't know. But uh, this one certainly fits the bill. Thanks for watching.